How's it going everyone? Hopefully you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing the G-Sort 1008. And uh, now this is the first British autoloading tank destroyer. Uh, that is a premium tank. And I mean, well, we don't have any others that I can think of. I mean, you, 87, you can have an autoloader, but no one uses it. But it's the first proper kind of autoloader um, for the British line anyway. Now, that being said, is it any good? Uh, yeah, it's all right. Um, it gets very, very nice APCR rounds. 1.4k uh, shell velocity, 321 uh, pen, which is tier 10 premium pen uh, on a tier 8 tank and the shell velocity to go along with that. So this is tier 10 APCR, without a doubt. Like, if you just want to go for marks, you do that. It's not really going to cost you that much. Um... 134k like so i had 12 shells in the in the depot so but you could earn that back really easily and you could easily just fire only this put on some uh, credit boosters if you got a premium account you're just gonna earn all those credits back anyway so you're gonna break even or even make profit more than likely if you've done this um so it is a valid valid strategy for marking the tank but i want to get as many credits as i can so we're going to be doing this and something like this. Always take some because it's a bit stupid to go with none. Now the gun can be a little bit derpy. Um, it doesn't have very good dispersion while moving the turret and stuff like that. So it is a little bit annoying to actually deal with. But overall it's not too bad. As much as the soft stats might make it look like it's kind of unusable. It's not the complete story when you actually get into the game. Like, and this is why stats aren't everything in this game, right? There's no point just looking at stats and just saying, yeah, that's a bad tank. It's not. Like, it gets 0.29 dispersion when it's turning the turret and on the move. That's really bad in consideration to other tanks. However, when you're in-game, it isn't unplayable. 0.3 dispersion, at least that's good enough for this tank, um, because... If it had, say, a four-second aim time and point, uh, point 0.4 dispersion, it would be unusable with the with the stats that it has for the dispersion uh, on the move and stuff. But we'll get more into that in a, in a second. Um, good enough view range. Um, you might as well use closed optics on this. I mean, what else are you realistically going to use? Um, so I have vents, coded optics, and IRM. Um, I have vents in the in the first slot because I want to the thing is uh, there's an argument for doing that and I can see where people are coming from with this and yes it makes sense because it gets the dispersion down even more um, but I'd rather have everything a little bit better than just a dispersion or you know and moving the tank around make it a little bit more maneuverable when you could really have everything just buffed a little bit Armour of this tank does not exist, however, if you fire at the hull, you're probably going to bounce. Um, this thing's hull armour is a bit troll, and so is the turret for some reason. Um, if you don't go and hit like these cheeks flush, it's probably going to just randomly bounce. Um, so you can bounce shells, but not you, you would never rely on it. Um, relying on the armour on this tank is just not a good idea. Um, also, you cannot get your gun elevation very high because obviously it's got this very, very long turret for what it is and it will get hit on this uh, engine deck at the back. So yeah, only 10 degrees of gun elevation, which makes the bat chat look good. Right? And this has 11. Hit points wise, 1,200. It's okay. I mean, you've got to consider that this is a TD. It gets okay concealment as well. And it's fast enough to actually move around the map and get places. Um, so 1,200 isn't too bad. The thing is, it's got the same hit points as, say, this thing, the 274A. And also the CS-52 list has only 100 more. So it's bang in line with kind of medium tanks of its tier. And you'll see me compare it to other medium tanks. Because as much as this is a TD, it's more of a medium tank than a TD because of this gun and the way that it plays. It's the same as you can use a Batchat as a scout tank, although it's very, very big and there are much better tanks now for being a light tank. The Batchat's still a viable 
choice to go and spot stuff. So you can play this as a medium tank if you want to. Um, and that's kind of how I'll play it, um, depending on the on the tier, obviously. Now, I think we've spoken about a brief overview of this tank enough about the kind of stats. Let's now go and compare it to other tanks. Uh, we'll throw in some TDs uh, and also some medium tanks. Okay, here we are on Tanks GG. We have the AMX AC48, the Rain 40 t Skoda T27 and the T69. These are the tanks that I will compare it to. Um, the AC48 is the only other tier 8 autoloader that's on a TD. Um, so obviously I'm going to compare it to that. And then we've got the kind of similar tanks, or the more similar tanks, we should say, to the G-Saw. Okay, so right away you're going to see abysmal DPM. That is just assisted massively by this 44 second reload. This reload is very long. If you look at it this way, you're reloading for an extra 12 seconds compared to the AMX AC48, and you are getting less alpha damage on that shell. Like, clip potential wise, yes, it does get four shells, so it is, you know, going to be higher. However, this is kind of a very, very nice sweet spot for the reload time comparison to the clip potential. This isn't. Like, this is a very, very long reload. This is like the Fosh 155 type of reload. It's really, really long for what you actually get out of the tank. And if you miss one shell in this tank, you really feel it. Um, it's painful if you miss a clip because you've got to go reload the entire thing for 44 seconds or 40 seconds. You'll get it down with brothers and arms and stuff. Um, and then try and try and do it again. Which is why you will see a lot of people just spamming gold in this thing. Because if you do miss a shot, it's kind of a bit of an issue. Um... And yeah, and the APCR CR rounds are just so good on this tank. Um, by far the best out of any of these. Now, the APCR rounds on this do come close. Um, and yes, they do have more pen. They have 325. Um, however, it doesn't have as much shell velocity. And shell velocity, to me, actually means a lot in this game. Um, I would rather have my shells go a little bit faster than four extra pen. Now moving on to comparing it to the medium tanks, yes, gun-wise, it does have the highest out of all of these, um, but we've already spoken, reload time in comparison to this clip potential, not really worth it. Um, and also the intraclip reload is two, which makes it joint second for the fastest intraclip reload. Um, obviously the 1.8 seconds on the Skoda T27 is going to be first. As well as that, you've got the six seconds to unload the entire clip, which is very nice. Um, and that's going to be joined with the T69 with uh, six seconds as well. And obviously 3.5 for the Skoda because that thing will unload just rapidly. It does have a 105mm calibre gun, so that does mean that you can pen uh, and overmatch UDES and STR VS1s. So keep that in mind, you're not going to have many problems with them. The 103O and the 103B, you are not going to be able to pen. So obviously you're going to have to go around them or just try and track them in some respect if you come across, if you come across them. Uh, potential damage is actually kind of low, uh, 12,800. It doesn't get loads and loads of shells, but it gets an okay amount i guess um it's about in line with the rest of the mediums um not in line with obviously this which gets twenty six thousand. um a load of shells that you could just do whatever you want with um but yeah this is it's okay and here we have the gun handling that i was on about yeah i mean point three three is really really nice uh, as a base dispersion value in comparison to all of these and also 2.21 is very, very nice as well. Um, it's only outmatched by the Skoda T27, so yeah. But dispersion while moving, dispersion while tank traverse, and dispersion while turret traverse. The turret traverse is actually fine because it's 0.08. That's okay. So when you're actually moving the turret, it's fine. Um, you're not really going to have any issues there. However, when you start moving, and when you start moving the actual tank to traverse it from left to right, um, it's going to be a bit of an issue because it's going to bloom out quite a bit. So IRM is going to be a must because you cannot have V-stab on this tank. So just keep that in mind when you are selecting your equipment. 
Now for the Ford speed, 60, joint, joint highest, it's very, very fast. It's fast enough to get out of the way, out of the danger, and to go and relocate somewhere else. Um, reverse speed of 17, it's a little bit low, to be honest, um, but better than 13 that the AMX gets. So engine power and power to weight, it doesn't have an insanely good power to weight, but it's more around a heavy tank kind of power to weight. So it's going to take you a while to get up to 60, but you'll get there eventually. And of course, the terrain resistance is okay for for this tank. It's not great, but it's okay. Now, for the armor of this tank, uh, let me quickly go and show you the live model of this. As you can see, all of this purple here is just an auto ricochet. So if you're using all your gun depression, for example, on a ridgeline, and they hit here or anywhere else, it's just an automatic ricochet. Like, they're not going to pen this. Um, you can also kind of size scrape, although... I wouldn't really recommend it, but it can work. Um, so this is what I mean. Don't trust the armor. You will get some random mounts, but it's not. It's nothing that you can rely on. And obviously they're going to go straight for your cheeks either side, as I've already said. The armor isn't anything to trust. Camo-wise, it's going to be the best. Um, this thing is very, very big, the AMX. So it's not going to have insanely good camo rating, but because it is a TD... It is going to have nice camo rating in comparison to all the other mediums. Um, and view range of 370 is enough. It's You're going to use closed optics anyway. So it's not really too much of an issue. Um, and yeah, fire chance of 20%. Doesn't really matter. It's basically exactly the same apart from the Skoda. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go and play some battles, shall we? Okay, so we get a tier 10 game. Um, and it's on Pearl River, so mm, where do we really want to go? Um, also, crew skills, I'll talk about it just quickly. Just just the standard brothers in arms, you want to put repairs, concealment, it doesn't really matter. Um, at the end of the day, this is a premium tank. You're probably going to have a crew for it. Um, I've actually got my tortoise crew in this. Um, yeah, it's just down to you, whatever you really want to put. Um, but the standard brothers and arms, of course, six cents. Um, and once you've got those out of the way, you can then decide how you actually want to play this tank because repairs and also concealment are a valid choice, uh, in my opinion. Um, it just depends. Do you want to be kind of on the front line, get your clip out and run away? Or do you want to kind of be a little bit passive and sit at the back a bit like this? Uh, then a uh, concealment would be a decent choice. Right, let's see what we can do. Obviously, right at the start, we're, ju we're just going to see how this how this game's panning out. What on earth are you doing? Okay, this guy's going to poke up here in a second. Hmm. Yes. I mean, the shell didn't go exactly where I aimed it, but... Hmm... Oh, ooh, ooh. Hello? Okay. I know we can't pen him. Uh, the tortoise is going to get farmed because I don't realistically know what he's up to. Alrighty ho. What we're going to do is we're going to drop down here because if you have a little look on the map, we're probably going to lose this side over here and we might be able to go and shoot this Pajetto or even anyone else that's around here. So let's go and have a little look around and see what we can do. Hmm. Conscious about losing the C-75, which it looks like it's going to happen in a second. I mean, you got a shot off. Uh, we're just going to stay put for now. And just see what we can do. 
The CS-59 is backing off. I tell you what, there's no RT in this game, so I can actually go safe behind this building. And hopefully we can use our view range to actually spot the WZ um, and a few other tanks if they come over the bridge. Or even that Pachetto if he pushes over. Okay, there's a defender. Do we have a shot on him? Not really. Hmm. Still a WZ, an E4, a T10. They were all over here swatted last time. Man, what is this defender doing? He's not wanting to push this. That WT, I think, has binos. Otherwise, I don't know how he's spotting this. Okay. Well, he gets away with that, apparently. I should be able to spot him. And of course, I cannot spot him. Nice. Oh. And now the defender is over there. I can't believe I didn't spot that guy. I don't understand how this Barras can be that lucky. Oh, that's twice now I've critically hit him and done no damage. He should be dead. Uh, we should be up like 1k at least. Well, let's just see if we can kill this defender. It's going to be blind, so... <laughs> what? What? I don't understand. How? <sighs> Luckiest person I've ever met. Well, there you go. A defeat. Um, it was a tier 10 game, and this should have been so much higher. Uh, let's actually go and check where those shells went. So enemies, yep, definitely where I aimed it. Um, and then we hit him here, and we hit him here, and we obviously hit the links in the wheel. So, yeah. I mean, to be fair, we aimed them okay, but RNG told us no. Um, yeah, let's just go into another game and just see if it's any better. Right, it's good to know that we have uh, this player on our team. Very nice. I need the first nine player total tomato 200 w and am i in the first nine wait one two yeah i'm in the first nine very nice 20 percent i play with efficiency and lost <laughs> gglt <laughs> this game is off to a tremendous start Oh, they just love those types of people that rely on XVM to just tell them that they're going to lose. Very, very good players. Anyway, let's see what we can do. Um, as you can see, we're a little bit too... Too short to actually just see over this. Um, although, actually, we might be able to do this. Give me a second. If we, like... There we go. We use this mount... I was waiting for him to go as long for his re uh, track repair as possible just to hopefully so that someone else can get a shot off but no one seems to be doing it yeah I was using this mound to go up a little bit higher because it does actually get really nice gun depression minus 10 I don't know if I mentioned that but it's very nice we have another 17 seconds. We'll tell our team quickly that.
I am conscious of what is going on to my right. But at the moment, they can't really do anything to me. I'm going to reload that quickly. I'm not going to wait around. But yeah, we're just going for tracking shots. Just trying to be very, very annoying, which is what I'd always, always recommend people do. Just go for tracking shots if you've got an auto loader, because once they're tracked, you can then just keep retracking them, especially if they use the repair kit, and they're just sitting ducks for you. But as you can see, we're being a little bit more aggressive. Obviously, being a tier 8 game, we can actually afford to kind of stretch our legs a little bit. I'm actually going to peek out because I think they say this. Yep, see? It was a chancy shot. We weren't really realistically going to pen that. Um, okay, so now that they are aware of me, I am going to try and push my focus. Apologies for the camera, I don't know what it was doing there. I'm going to try and push my focus over to this side a little bit more. Now, obviously we do have a long old reload still. But we might be able to kind of track someone who's going to be over peaking this in a moment. Uh, we do have a Projector 46 and a Type 59 that are kind of just at the back here doing nothing. So we do have to be a bit wary. Five seconds, if this guy's still tracked, we're going to just decimate him in a second. Oh, I'm an idiot. I thought that I had a long repair time on the track, so I repaired it, but I didn't. Oh, well, we're dead here. GG. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're kind of in their base now, but they're in ours as well, so... Um, although, only a Scorpion G hasn't been spotted on the enemy team. So, this could be a win? Just cap. Easy. It's very rare that I tell people to go and cap, but... I mean, they do need to kill this GW. Okay, they're not going to win this. Unlucky. Okay, so yes, we lost. Um, nobody wanted to try and cap. Um, yeah. Right. The Hawk 30 just sat behind a bush and didn't do really anything. Um, just tried to farm some damage, which I can't blame him, I guess. Like, I don't know. It's whatever. Like you, you're not going to win everything. Uh, we done three point three, sorry, three point four, nearly three point five k damage, um, in that kind of very short space of time. Like how many, how how long were we alive for? Time of destruction, three minutes fifty seconds, basically. So basically four minutes, and we have done three point five k. Um, so yeah, we hit most of our shots. Um, obviously a few did go a little bit astray, but on the whole it was okay. Um, yeah, this is a decent tank. Like, the thing is, like, you can't make it so that the reload time is stupidly short or has, like, completely overpowered DPM because it would be overpowered. Like, I think that this is actually really, really well balanced. Um, it's fun to play. It's not game-breaking. And you just you make credits. Like, honestly, if this is on sale... And you have money and you want to buy a premium and you kind of enjoy auto loaders and you enjoy that kind of play style of you can go in and just get your clip done and back off or you want to play a little bit a far away and just do some damage. I would recommend this tank. I like this tank. Um, I don't care what other people say. I like this thing. Um, and I would recommend it to you. Um, the exactly the same thing as I said about the Carnarvon Action 10. I like it, I'd recommend it, not everyone's going to like it, but I like it and I would recommend it. If you, you, you've seen gameplay, you've seen stats, you can make your mind up if you want it or not. I have no idea when they're going to sell this thing, because it has not been available to be sold outside of loot boxes. So, 
I guess it's just whenever. I would I would predict that they're going to sell more and more premiums as Frontline's coming up. Frontline is probably going to arrive in around July um, when the Battle Pass ends. Um, and, you know, after that. Um, so the month after the Battle Pass ends, it's probably going to start Frontline then. In my, in my prediction, I am not affiliated with Wargaming. I don't know anything. But that's what I predict. Um, they did say it'll be in the other half of the year so we were having still hunter first and then it'll be frontline and i think that this is going to be very very nice in frontline um considering that you can just get your clip out and just go and reload have a have a nice cup of coffee or your tea and just grind some credits in frontline you know anyway if you did enjoy this video then you know what to do leave a like and subscribe as it does all help me out greatly. Um, and if you want more reviews, leave a comment down below. What tank would you like to see next? I have a whole entire list here that you can choose from. Um, some of them I have already done, but leave a comment down below what you want. And hopefully you're doing well and that you're staying safe. And I'll see you all in the next one.